Before we get started here, I do want to give you a little bit of a disclaimer. Now, when it comes to this mini PC that we're going to be taking a look at, the uh, company Menace Forum does not recommend overclocking the RAM or upping the TDP over its stock configuration. Now, I personally own this mini PC, so I can basically do whatever I want with it. And I wanted to show you exactly what this thing can do once it's basically maxed out. And I'm going to tell you right now, we've tested a lot of mini PCs on the channel. This is by far the most powerful APU powered mini PC with integrated graphics that we've taken a look at so far on the channel. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. This is the Menace Forum UM690. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I've done a couple videos on it. And in fact, this is my favorite mini PC on the market right now with integrated graphics. And for the last couple days, I've been doing some tweaking and tuning in the BIOS with this unit here. But before we test this thing out, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. I've come up with a really potent little combination here that actually performs amazingly in Linux. We're going to be using an operating system called Chimera OS. I've done a video on it recently. If you're interested in checking that out, link will be in the description. But uh, I've managed to overclock the RAM in this. We've also taken the TDP up and this thing is putting out better performance than I've ever seen from a mini PC with integrated graphics. Now, when it comes to the RAM, I'm using 5600 megahertz team group RAM or team force RAM and I've overclocked it to 6,000 megahertz from the BIOS. And real quick, if you're not familiar with the UM690, for the CPU, we've got that Ryzen 9 6900HX. I've got 32 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 6,000 megahertz in this unit. And we've also got built-in Radeon 680M graphics based on RDNA 2. But with the HX variant, these are actually clocked at 2,400 megahertz instead of 22. So again, nobody else condones doing this to their mini PC, but uh, before we get into it, I did want to give you a quick look at the BIOS settings that I'm using here. If we go to SMU, Common Options, System Configuration is set to 54 watts, and as you can see, all of my power limits are maxed out. I've just taken this up as high as it'll go. Now, it won't run at 100 watts. It actually levels out about 78 when everything's maxed out. Still, a lot of wattage for a small PC like this, but the main thing here is that faster RAM. This is 5600 megahertz RAM right out of the box, but I was able to take it up to 6000 without any issues. This is about as high as I can go. I've actually been able to take it up as high as 6200 megahertz, but with some games, it does crash out in the middle of gaming. So I just backed it on off and it's been really stable at 6000. And the final thing I changed here was the PWM on the fan. You could leave it at auto or there's a full on setting, but I've set this to 120. Gives me a nice even balance of a quiet system and it keeps it nice and cool. I haven't seen it go over 85 degrees Celsius. And remember, I mean, we've got this 6900HX maxed out here. Moving over to the operating system. Like I mentioned, I'm running Chimera OS. This is the latest version with a gamepad UI. So we've basically got everything that the Steam Deck does here, but we're working with a lot more power and uh, it's still a super small form factor. We've got access to system-wide FSR. We're gonna be using Proton here to play our games. It's based on Arch Linux and there's a full desktop interface. If you wanna check out a video of this operating system running on a more powerful system, link for that is in the description. But as you can see, we've got that Ryzen 9 6900HX, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 6,000 megahertz, and the built-in RDNA 2 680M iGPU. And remember, this actually runs at 2400 megahertz because we're working with an HX variant. That also gives us a little more there on the GPU side of things. With something like the 6800U or even the 6800H, it runs at 2200 megahertz. I know it's only 200 more megahertz there, but you know, every little bit helps when we're already working with such a low power system. But yeah, with all that out of the way, it's time to show you what this thing can do. 
And first up, we've got Doom Eternal 1080p low medium mix with no resolution scale, dynamic or otherwise. I know it's an older game, and it does work well on Linux, that's one of the reasons I wanted to show this off first, but you know, running this at 1080p with that low medium mix on an iGPU is pretty impressive, especially given that we're in Linux, and we can get an average of 81 FPS at a Doom Eternal on this system. I also wanted to throw a fighting game into the mix, so I went with Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. It's not Steam Deck verified, but on this system here, we can go to high 1080p, and it's going to run at 60 all day. Another one I always like to test is Injustice 2, and on this setup, high medium mix 1080p, really great performance. And of course, you know, if you've got another fighting game that'll work great with uh, Linux or Proton itself, then it should run really well on this system. Next up, we've got Horizon Zero Dawn, 900p, original settings, FSR set to balanced. We're getting an average of 64 FPS, but I'll tell you, if you don't mind playing this at 720p, the average jumps up into the low 80s. Plus, we're at original settings, and we've got a little more to go if we want to take it down to low. So overall, yeah, this is another game that's very playable on this mini PC. The Nord. Okay, so here's God of War, and this is one I always like testing on these APUs, even from 5000 series with Vega graphics. This is the best performance I've seen on an iGPU so far, be it Windows or Linux. We're at 900p, original settings, and FSR set to balance. We're getting an average of 72 FPS out of this game, and it's really impressive to see it running this well on integrated graphics. I also tested this at 1080p, low settings, and FSR set to performance. We got an average of 76 FPS like that, but personally, I kind of wanted to keep that balanced FSR to keep that fidelity up. Here's Spider-Man Miles Morales 900p low settings with FSR set to balance. I've got to give it to the devs here because they have been putting out some updates that really do increase this uh, iGPU performance, be it the Steam Deck or even a Ryzen chip like this. But we're averaging 74 FPS at 900p with Spider-Man Miles Morales on an iGPU. But out of everything that I tested, I think the most impressive thing here was Cyberpunk 2077. We're using the Steam Deck preset at 720p, and we can get an average of around 81 FPS. We can take this up to 1080, taking the settings down to low, and setting FSR to performance, and when I'm running it like that, I do like turning V-Sync on, so we're right there at a steady 60, but it will run it. I personally just wanted to see if we could match or exceed the Steam Deck preset, and obviously, we're super exceeding it. So when it comes down to it, taking the UM690 to the limit with Linux really helps out with performance, but not everybody's going to do this, and I completely understand. But one thing we can look forward to are the RDNA3 APU-powered mini PCs to come in the future, and I'm sure we're going to see really great performance. In fact, in just a couple weeks, the 7940HS is going to be coming to laptops, and I'm going to definitely get my hands on one. That's got an RDNA 3 based iGPU with a clock up to 3000 MHz on those integrated graphics. And having those higher clocks is really nice, but I think one of the best things about that new chip is it will support up to 7600 MHz LP DDR5 RAM, which as we know, up in that RAM speed, given that we're using system memory as our VRAM with these iGPUs, is really going to up the performance with those RDNA3 based APUs. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I've been messing around with this for the last couple days and figured I'd make a quick one. And yeah, it is the most powerful mini PC that we've tested with integrated graphics. And seeing Linux run on it so well is really promising for the future. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.